So, meine Herren, ihr dürft Platz nehmen. Jochen Schlosser, CSO Adform und Gerhard Lowe, International Media Management, Digital Transformation, Deutsche Telekom. What's happening now? <laughs> We talked yesterday about GDPR and e-privacy here with the President, uh, Vice President of EU Commission and uh, Matthias Döpfner and so on and so on. It was, it was something very hot. And today we want to know what, what the audience is thinking about it, yeah? Yeah. Let's try a poll. So please grab your smartphones, everyone. Uh, everybody is asked to participate in our poll. So basically you I guys cannot see anything to... on the display here. So you need to go to slido.com, enter the hashtag at form one, and then you will see those questions and can participate in the poll. We just take some answers for the first two, three minutes, and then, then we'll check it out, and we want to do the same thing again at the, at the end of the discussion. It uh, would be great if some people participate, as it is uh, basically part of the discussion where the industry is at, so we don't want to talk e-privacy, reaching out to, let's say, 2018, 19, 20, uh, but really look at where we are right now with the GDPR changes coming into full effect at May 25th this year. Uh, that's a discussion that Gerd and I I want to take, of course, guided by our moderators. Thanks for that. And uh, we just love to see where you are, what's your opinion on that, and at the end see if our information maybe had had an impact or not. And uh, I think with that, as it seems to be working, um, I think we it's can working, start, yeah. start the conversation. I'm not sure everybody got it. It's, it's, it's slido.com, and then it's our testing is working everywhere at form one. Yeah, it's running. There it is. So, Gerd, it seems that many people in the audience are aware of the fact that GDPR requires a lot of work. Yeah. What do you think about it? Do you think advertisers see it the same way? I think so, Michelle. I mean, there's a lot of hype at the moment on the GDPR topic. Um, when I speak to other advertisers in the context of the World Federation of Advertisers, where we as Deutsche Telekom are very involved, talking to other large advertisers from around the globe, there's a lot of uncertainty people feel that the law that comes into effect only in two months' time has a lot of room for interpretation, there are a lot of contradictions. We know from the, um, from the EU Commission people that a lot of compromises had to be made. So I think it's fair to say it's not an ideal law. It's not a good law in that sense. Um, but I think if, if, uh, if I speak to other advertisers, we all have the same opinion. It's not going to be an apocalypse. There's no cataclysmic moment coming on the 25th um, of May. Um, a recent poll that we did uh, at the WFA, we saw that, of course, advertisers are concerned about the impact of GDPR. They're not so much concerned about the 4% fine. They're much more concerned about their brand reputation. We know that there's going to be violations. We know there's going to be complaints. We know there are going to be court cases for sure. And advertisers don't want to be the brand that's in the headlines. If there's going to be a violation in a court case, it's not going to be the tech supply that's going to be named or the small DSP or the ad exchange. That's not interesting for the media. The, the media is interested about the brand. So yes, advertisers are very concerned about the impact that this law could have on their brands and the trust that they have consume, with consumers that they've built up over many years and many decades. So this is the concern that advertisers have. At the same time, I must also say that advertisers are struggling to be ready. I think we'll talk a little bit more about that, Jochen. Only 65% of advertisers in a poll said that they feel they'll be 100% ready for GDPR. So I think that's a very big issue. How ready are you really? Jochen, what are your experiences as, as a tech partner? Well, yeah, so as a tech company and a computer scientist by education, I have to admit that I'm working 20% of my time on legal topics right now, so not as a legal expert, but as a consultant to our external lawyers and our internal lawyers and also to products. So um, I think this, this answer under, under control about major efforts is probably a good wrap up how I see the, the attack industry here right now as well. Um, we 
basically have the fact that everyone in, in digital has ID management. All those IDs need to be managed in a way that it's compliant on the GDPR, and this is just insane effort. So it's not major, but it's really insane efforts, and uh, we've started investing into that a lot. And um, usually I say if you work in digital advertising, especially technology, if you can't take the heat, don't be part of the game, because it's agile, things are changing, uh, but it's really surprising that regulation is changing, and that then guidance from the, uh, the, the, the councils comes out only six months uh, ahead of the, the actual implementation or final uh, go live of that law. So it's really interesting to see that. It's really interesting to see how, how much needs to be done. So we, we are investing a couple of thousand mandates into this in Q1. Um, and I, I'm always a little bit, so all right, we're pretty big. We have 400 developers which can do that. So a couple of thousand mandates are not killing us. But everyone has ID management. So what are the a tad smaller companies doing. So if you have 30, 35 developers, how can you do that? And I think it's just unfair towards, uh, towards the ad tech industry that guidance comes out so late. Uh, and there's no need to panic. People will be prepared. People will, will have solutions in place. But it will be pretty hacky in many situations. There will be manual processes. So they will be compliant. Um, but the investments that need to go into those type of governance and, and compliance controls for the people out there, it's just a lot. And I'm pretty sure that not many, many companies basically want to play that game long term and that we will see less companies in the future acting in digital advertising because it's, uh, it's too much effort on the compliance side, uh, which doesn't mean that it goes away. It just means it will be bigger and fewer companies uh, and it's becoming an enterprise game step by step, even more than it is already today. It will be a problem for the smaller ones. So that's what we were talking about yesterday. What is this, the smaller business? What are they doing? What, how is German Telecom positioned its wealth towards the change yeah. coming in May? Yeah. I think I agree with Jochen. A lot of time being spent with lawyers, with data lawyers um, at the moment. So there's a lot happening. There's a lot happening on the front end, of course, also in the back end. Um, as a company with hundreds, tens of millions of uh, consumers, tens of millions of consumers in, in Europe and hundreds of millions of consumers uh, across the world, it's of course very important for us um, that we are doing the right thing. So it's not something that we're taking lightly. Uh, there's a lot of work being done. Um, I haven't uh, measured it in number of mandates, Jochen, like you have, but <laughs> I think it, uh, it is clear that there's a lot of work to be done. I think, of course, uh, when we talk about front end, there's the website, there's the apps. Um, it's all about uh, changing the consent mechanism, adapting that, um, ch changing the privacy policies, the privacy statements. Um, I think there's also a lot uh, of new rights that consumers will get through the law. For good and reasons. And for good reasons. And that also um, not only demands front-end work, but also a lot of back-end work. So, for example, in our case, we do credit checks on people that apply for contracts. So what data is being used and where is that data? Of course, people want to, or they have the right to ask where their data is, what the data looks like, to be able to get that from the back-end systems into the front-end system to show consumers that at the click of a button is, of course, very difficult, but we're working on that. Of course, the, the way that we work with the data inside the organization, whether it's then within the CRM systems, with the uh, systems that the, the stores use, the systems that the call center use. Um, there's a lot of that kind of stuff that we're working on. Customers have the right to be, uh, oh, they have the right to ask to have their records deleted, yep. for example. So how do we go around that? So I think it, it's fair to say that there's a lot happening. I think as a company, um, we see ourselves as very responsible. We want to be at the forefront. We want to be seen as, as very um, um, uh, taking data privacy and data security very seriously. We do and we have. We have a board member um, for this topic, data privacy, and I've had for many years. So I think it's also fair to say this is nothing new um, that we're doing in terms of how we deal with data, but GDPR has a lot of additional requirements, which, as you said, doesn't, you can't implement this overnight. This is a lot of work, uh, and this is what we're working but on. But again, I think it's, it's 
people expect a company like Deutsche Telekom to be, let's say, almost ready, but still have to invest lots of work, right? So if you, if you really look at what needs to be done when it comes to the right to be forgotten, the rights to insights, uh, all the APIs that need to be built, and people which are on product side or maybe on product, but which are a bit further away from tech, they don't know how much effort that is, right? So the lead data from big data processing systems where we store billions of records every month and we have historic data over, over a couple of months is just lots of work because those systems have never been designed to efficiently delete single data points in there. Exactly. So that's really, really a lot of work. And I think what's, what's an important message is um, what we need to check. If someone states, and people still do that today, by the way, God, that they say GDPR doesn't have an, have an impact. I, I forgot the number, that, but there were a couple of people. 5%. 5%. It has a major impact. It's, I think it's actually for consumers is good, a good law. Like the timing is not really nice in the sense of implementation for the players, but it has a major impact. There needs to be lots of things to be done. And if you close your eyes and you don't do anything, you're really, really on the wrong track. And if you have a service provider who doesn't do anything and says, you're fine, data was anonymous, now it's pseudonymous, it's all easy peasy, this, this is really dangerous. And we are already seeing that some people are ducking away from the efforts. First, US companies have retracted their business from, from Europe. So this, this is happening right now. Uh, maybe GDPR is just the excuse for non-successful business. You, don't, you never know. Yeah. But we are seeing that. And we are seeing discussions with, with players who are thinking about leaving Europe for that. So if that's good, if that's bad, I don't know. But if you, if you have a couple of service providers there and you, some of them might just drop out of, uh, out of Europe, that's not good. So you should better make sure that you talk to people yeah. who, who have a foot down in that and they say, we are investing and it has impact. Because if you say it's not, you're just like closing both eyes and you know that you're going to hit the wall pretty, pretty soon. So um, that there are stuff that just needs to be done, definitely. And I think it's also important for... Just a second, sorry. we have the second poll, yeah. don't forget it. It's, uh, the code is at form two, so at the end, in, in four minutes, we want to know if what you're thinking changed during our, our panel here. Yes. Yeah. I just wanted to say, I think another important uh, aspect for advertisers to look at is the value chain or the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. um, it's one thing for us as a large advertiser and a large technology company to change our systems, front end, back end, etc., legal stuff. But if our partners within the value chain aren't doing their bits, yeah. guess what? The finger's going to point back to us, right? And we can have that, uh, um, the, the distrust from, from customers. So, Jochen, how are you seeing the other players in the value chain uh, responding? I think when we look up at, at what ha is happening at IAB level, I personally don't agree with, with every single statement that's there, of course, but it's an industry organization. I think we have really good uh, progress. We have built a consent management uh, integration into the open RTB protocol with uh, 20, 25 companies uh, driven by, uh, by the US, by Europe. Uh, great collaboration. Now people are, who are joining up for that, they are implementing it. And things are happening within weeks and months. And I, I think this still shows that that digital tech is able to, to work agile, to really adapt, move forward, and that people are accepting it. Everyone I talk to states, this is a good thing. It's annoying, we have to adapt now really short term, really drive things forward, but there's not a single question with the, like big serious players that it's a good thing and that it will make the industry more transparent, make the value chain uh, more tangible and less, less opaque and get more trust into digital advertising, not just from a privacy perspective, but also from a business perspective about what fees are being deducted where. I, I have the feeling that like, digital advertising is growing up this year, next year, and that this is, childhood times are over. Maybe yeah. we were like in the, in the teens the last teens. four or five yeah. years, but now it's grow up time. We're going yeah. to college now, getting serious education, and it's, it's gonna be a really straight industry with no opaqueness and really better business models and better data privacy and security settings. And this is where I think we can all be proud of in, when we look uh, three years into the future then. So when we're looking at the poll, what do you think? What, what what's coming up after after May 25th? What is what is happening? Yeah, I think one has Maybe as I said three or five or yeah exactly. This seven is not, years. This is not apocalypse. It's not the end. As as Jochen said, it's just in a very important step. 
in the evolution of this business. This is not going away. I think the legal frameworks will increase. There's going to be a lot more e-privacy. I don't need to say more than that. Um, what we've seen in the media in the last week, I'm not going to say the names, but I think we've all seen what is happening around the topic of data privacy and security. This is going to become much, much, much more. Where we are now is easy days, easy things to do. It's going to get worse or let's say stronger if, if, yeah. I, if we don't uh, necessarily uh, have it as bad or good. So I think people need to prepare, uh, advertisers need to, need to be prepared, the ecosystem need to be prepared. This is just the beginning. So make good friends with the data lawyers in your organization. Become a data lawyer if you're interested, because I think that's going to be the hot make topic. serious money there. You're going yeah. to be <laughs> <laughs> high demand jobs uh, in the next five years. And uh -huh. so it's, it's here to stay and be ready. Uh, but, but what I think is super interesting, maybe just quickly before we wrap up, the data protection authorities, I really have to, to tip my head also to them because they must have been prepping so hard right now with such a big regulation coming into play. It's not that many people in the authorities. And how are you going to prioritize? Who are you going to ask? And what is a big company sending you back? Hundreds and thousands of pages of documentation. It's going to be a huge effort on their side. And uh, it's work that needs to be done. I hope that they get some extra stuffing, honestly, because yeah. otherwise it'll sure. take uh, one and a half years until anything is enforced. But um, I think it's important that, that there is focus on that, and it doesn't help to implement a law if you don't implement the execution on top of it. It's just like having a PowerPoint slide, but you don't build the product, right? right. So I think if we take this seriously, we also have to tip our heads to the guys who enforce it. And uh, I, I hope that there will be good discussions, also some flexibility on both sides, because guidance from, from the Working Party 29 and from other, let's say, counseling organizations is still missing on many things. So there are gray areas, and I think it's going to be a little ping pong game for a while, and I hope that we can make quick progress to really have a solid ground where we can take off to, to strong growth in the next years again. Let's so talk about the poll at the end. Yeah. First question was, <laughs> what impact will GDPR have on your marketing activities? And we had the majority under control, but major effects, 60%, and then fairly little impact, 22%, and the rest not important. And now, what do you think about this? Has your opinion changed on GDPR? I think it looks pretty, it look, I think we forgot one. We should have mentioned, yes, looking for a new job, want to become a data <laughs> lawyer consultant, and then it would have changed probably. Uh, but I think it hasn't changed that much. Uh, working on it, changes are plenty. That's kind of the same one as we initially had yeah. on, um, I'm not worried, but it's major impact, uh, which, which for me also kind of shows good distribution that most people are working on it. Yeah. It's as usual, 20% are top, 20% are ignoring things and the rest is on a way and average yeah. and it'll work out. Is it enough exactly. being on the way, thinking about it? <laughs> Honestly, I don't think so. So uh, I think people should have invested earlier. I've seen people in, uh, appointing uh, data privacy officers mid-February. So what is that guy supposed to do in, in two months, right? It's, it's not possible to change anything such short term if you really have to build all the documentation, change product, change privacy notices. It's, it's, lots of work, it's, yeah. it's cross team collaboration. If you're starting now, you're way too late. So I think if you're average, you should have started. And the people who are not concerned but see major efforts, I'm pretty sure they have started August, September last year. They will have priority one items ready, maybe not priority two, yeah. um, but they will be ready enough in order to, let's say, being questioned by authorities and being able to sketch their framework, sketch their policies uh, good enough in order to get more time to be fully ready. And I think that's where most people are. Yeah. Gentlemen, thanks a lot. Thanks Thank for sharing your time with us. Thank you. Give me a warm hand for Gerhard and Jochen. Thanks for being here.